music music across the board to be perfectly honest pretty much every kind of genre although i don't care for um most kinds of rap and i'm not really a big country fan but as christina said it's the twangy voice country that i don't really like really good genuine like hoedown country i can get into i've noticed that i like country more the more country it sounds but if it sounds like people singing pop music with a twangy accent then i don't like it and i can go on and on and on about particular songs that i don't like and think are stupid or bands but that's not what we're talking about we're talking about love here so a fan of music in general but specifically i'm a very big fan of rock music and then you narrow it down beyond that, I am a particular geek for uh, psychedelic rock. I first got into psychedelic rock when I was a teenager, and um, I had recently discovered the Beatles. Discovered as far as anyone can discover the Beatles, you know, you have grown up on the music, but then suddenly realizes, hey, this stuff is amazing and awesome when you're 15. And your dad was like, yeah, I've been trying to tell you that for the past 15 years. My kids caught on a lot sooner. My kids are already Beatles, Beatle maniacs, and they're only uh, six and four. They found that songs like Strawberry Fields Forever and I'm a Walrus, Tomorrow Never Knows, and, uh, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, Dear Prudence, all resonated with me as a very odd rather depressed and uh, pensive teenager. I like to wallow in the weirdness. But anyway, I'm pretty straight edge when it comes to substances. I don't even get drunk. Um, you don't need substances to be weird. My brain is psychedelic anyway. I mean, I'm not saying that I necessarily have uh, hallucinations because I don't. What is it, 1995? And I was uh, beginning to feel that modern music could never, ever live up to the potential of the Beatles, which is probably too high of a bar. So modern, yeah, I can't lift it, but, but I just had a feeling that music was better then than it, than it was now, because it was all this annoying pop music. And then I heard Champagne Supernova by Oasis, and I said, wow, people are still making this kind of music. So I'm into psychedelic music, regardless of era. For years, I hated Pink Floyd, after I got into rock music, after I got into psychedelia. But it wasn't until I heard their albums that I realized what they had to offer because all the radio plays is like the dumb stuff and like another brick in the wall part two over and over and over again, which is not that great of a song. So my parents bought me Dark Side of the Moon the, the Christmas after the Thanksgiving where my cousin made us watch, um, watch Wizard of Oz and listen to it at the same time. And then I picked up uh, Wish You Were Here in a used music store a little while while later and then when I picked up the wall a little bit after that I realized that um they had become one of my favorite bands but I don't think it was until I heard see Emily play that I really allowed myself to call them my second favorite band okay, so if they can make a song like this then uh, I'll give them credit for all the other songs that they make. probably be the geekiest thing I ever did regarding a psychedelic music. For some reason I really wanted to get myself a copy of Status Quo's Pictures of Matt Strickman, and I was searching online for an album that actually contained it, because this was before individual track buying, which in iTunes and stuff, which I never did anyway, because I don't have, you know, an iPod. Um, and I, I discovered this thing. Nuggets to original artifacts from the British Empire and beyond. <laughs> Which is just the most bizarre box set I'd ever seen. <laughs> and and it and it 
it advertises itself as such. <clears throat> in, in the beginning, there's actually a paragraph that says, I admire you, you've got guts. What else could explain the fact that you've just plunked down 60 plus dollars of your hard-earned money on a box set that contains no hits and just a scant few tracks that you might recognize? Um, I bought it used for 30 bucks, so it was a little bit better of a deal. <laughs> it was a very good investment because I learned about all sorts of weird bands I'd never heard of, or bands I had heard of, like The Move, but didn't actually know any of their songs, and that could like really common for um, like people in other countries. The original Nuggets box set I never got because I looked at the tracks on there and, and they weren't as odd. They were all things I recognized. They might be oddities for people who, um, live in other countries and don't have someone like my dad raising them. <clears throat> it was, and, and that set also leaned more towards garage rock. There's garage rock in this set. There's a lot of garage rock, rock but there's also a lot of really weird psychedelic stuff. Psychedelic pop, which I probably even enjoy more than your psychedelic rock, because I like, I like the combination of the psychedelic themes with the cheery you know, the cheeriness. When I was a depressed teenager, I tended to enjoy the dark and creepy psychedelic songs more. Nowadays, I enjoy that. If you can throw in happiness and psychedelic together, okay, then that will make me happy. If you follow me on Twitter or Facebook, you may have noticed a few weeks ago I kind of went off on It's All Too Much the George Harrison Beatles song, and it may be the most joyful, amazing psychedelic song I should probably start recording now. I've got a whole lot of stuff to say.